Hey everyone, it's Nikki, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Netflix series Buddy Thunderstruck. Buddy Thunderstruck was created by Brian Wiesbrock and was animated by Stupid Buddy Studios. It's a stop motion animated series, and it was released on March 10th, 2017. Buddy Thunderstruck is about the eponymous Buddy Thunderstruck, a truck racing dog who works for his aunt's trucking business, and his exploits with his best friend Darnell in and around the town of Grease Pit. So before I started talking about some of the more technical elements of the show, I I wanted to first off list my top moments and aspects of the show. So to start off with, I wanted to mention just Darnell's pompadour. Darnell in general is a great character. He's my favorite character, but I just love his little haircut and his little pompadour. It just gives him so much character and makes him stand out from the others. And I just thought it was a really cute detail. Another thing I wanted to touch on was the great names of all of the characters, such as the ever punny Jacko Valtrades, the confusingly named Auntie Uncle, and the aptly named Belvedere Moneybags and Robbie Burgles. Another thing is the use of felt puppets for this show. As I mentioned, it was made by Stupid Buddy Studios, who some of you might recognize as the same animation studio behind Robot Chicken. And I just liked the use of felt puppets as opposed to claymation or other types of puppets often seen in stop motion. Then there's one of the telltale signs that this is a children's show, but it was still something I really liked was the use of fart nuggets. as basically a swear word. Like whenever the characters were frustrated, they would yell like fart nuggets. I'm, maybe I'm just a child at heart, but I thought it was very funny. As far as the character dynamics go on the show, I really enjoyed Buddy and Darnell's relationship, their friendship. At times it seemed one-sided on Darnell's parts, but other episodes and moments within episodes show that Buddy really does care about and value Darnell as not only the mechanic to his truck, but also his best friend. So I really appreciated their dynamic. Speaking of the punny name of Jacko, he always manages to live up to his name, Jacko of all trades, by seemingly having whatever qualifications or expertise an episode needs him to have in order to move the plot along. I thought that was like a funny kind of gag throughout the series. This is one scene in one episode, speaking of Darnell's relationship with Buddy, but Buddy has like anxiety as he goes out into the real world and attempts to buy some batteries for Darnell. It was very funny, but also very realistic. A funny take on a realistic situation. And there's Auntie Uncle always managing without fail to blow whatever fortune Buddy has made for her, which thus necessitates the need for another episode where he wins her more money, only for her to blow it all again. I just thought that was a funny way to keep the story going in an episodic show like this. Another character I really liked was Tex Jr. He was just the epitome of cringy rich kid who thinks he's super cool. He reminds me of, um, what's his name? The kid from Booksmart who invites the main characters to a party on his yacht where there's no one else there. That's basically his vibe, along with really outdated slang. I also just really liked his relationship with Buddy and Darnell, particularly in the episode's Babysitters Go, where they basically have to babysit him. <laughs> I thought that that was an interesting take on a rivalry, or at least a one-sided rivalry. All right, now I'm going to get in more depth about the more technical elements of the show, which include the storytelling and writing, the art style and character design, the setting and world building, the cinematography and editing, and the performances. Storytelling and writing. The writing is a bit simplistic and repetitive, which makes sense given that its target audience is young children. There is some adult-friendly humor, however. I think because of the episodic nature of the show, it's not really bingeable like a lot of other Netflix series. Maybe that's why Netflix hasn't given it any love. It hasn't been officially canceled, but it has not been renewed and it's been almost four years, so or it's been almost three years. Anyway, there's also the Maybe Pile, which is one of Netflix's first forays in her interactive entertainment, like the whole Bandersnatch thing with Black Mirror. I thought that the Maybe Pile was interesting, although it was a bit weird how you could only use the interactive elements on your mobile device. I thought that it severely limited the storytelling capabilities as someone who barely ever watches Netflix on my phone. I almost always watch it either on my computer or on TV. So having to watch it specifically on my phone, just to tap little buttons, it's not like it was a video game or an app, it wouldn't have been that hard to implement it onto a computer. It might have been more difficult for like a TV, but I just thought that was kind of weird, weirdly limiting. Art style and character design. The animation in this show is one of my 
favorite things about it. As I mentioned earlier, it's stop motion with mostly felt puppets and it's produced by the same studio that does Robot Chicken. So if you see some stylistic similarities there, you're not you're not going crazy. And I thought that it, certain use of details like cotton balls for smoke or other kind of like fake effects made it look really toy-like and stylized in a really fun way. Setting and world building. The town of Grease Pit is a great, well, Grease Pit in the middle of the boondocks of the Southern US. I especially like Buddy's Garage, Leroy's Convenience Store, and the Concho Bolo, which is a restaurant run by Buddy's cousin Muncie. They all just reek of places I've been to on a long drive down the interstate highway. Cinematography and editing. I think a large part of why the show looks so great, aside from the well-made puppets and sets and stuff, is due to the cinematography. Framing the characters and scenes in a way that really makes Grease Pit feel life-size. Even though they're these tiny little figurines, just the way things are shot makes it look like it could be a big town that you could like actually go to. Performances. You gotta love the variety of southern accents, stereotypical and accurate, that this show has going on. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be set in the south, but it also has some vague western vibes as well as midwestern. I live in Iowa, so I'm kind of familiar with that type of thing. Also, Sam Raimi plays Darnell, which I did not realize until I started working on this video, and Debbie Derryberry, the voice of Jimmy Newton, Tron and many others, plays basically every female character in the show. So I thought those were interesting tidbits. Before I wrap this review up, I just wanted to kind of talk about some of the things that this show reminded me of or make other comparisons to other media. Like a lot of the stuff that I've talked about in this series thus far, there weren't a lot of like anthropomorphic or furry pieces of media. I would say this really reminded me of. Rango kind of comes to mind because Rango is set in this Western town. So it's got that kind of vibe. Although Rango is definitely more of like a cowboy Western movie rather than like something set in the South. Another movie that this show reminded me a lot of, I saw someone was like this basically furry version of this is Talladega Nights. Great film. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen. I have shitty taste as we've already established, but it's obviously, and that's it. So that movie's about NASCAR. This is about animal people racing big trucks. They're, aren't they monster trucks? I do not know enough about that world to know. I don't think they're monster trucks. They're more like stunt trucks. There's an episode where they like do stunt tricks in the cars, but yeah, so that's another obvious comparison. And then last but not least was the Dukes of Hazard, a really problematic show in today's today's light. Well, not really problematic, but just like the Confederate flag on the car doesn't help. But there's an element to the show where Buddy and Darnell are constantly being chased by Sheriff Cannonball, who's this horse, and Deputy Hoisenberry, who's this little deer, for speeding and otherwise evading the law. So that aspect of it kind of reminded me of the Dukes of Hazard kind of formula. So in conclusion, Buddy Thunderstruck was a really cute show that Netflix seemed to have screwed over. Like I said earlier, I don't think it's officially been canceled, but seeing how season one and the maybe pile were released in 2017 and it is now 2021, it seems unlikely that Netflix intends to give it more seasons. That said, I would recommend you at least give the first couple episodes a watch to see if it's something that's up your alley. All right, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.